We are in chapter 16, Analysis of Variance, or for short, ANOVA. Coming out of chapter 10, we looked at how we can compare two population means. That's what we did in chapter 10. So we had two means, mu1, mu2, and we were able to compare them. Now the way we compare two population means in chapter 10 was by comparing the averages right the sample averages and we decided whether the difference between the sample means were positive negative or simply zero well in chapter 16 we want to do the same thing except the difference is that we have more than two population means actually in this chapter so we could be comparing still we could compare two population means even using the method of ANOVA I will show you how that is done later on in fact I have an example in our uh, section 16.3 I believe so two more lectures from here we will see how that can be done so what we did in chapter 10 in fact can be done in chapter 16 using analysis of variance but before we actually get to see how the ANOVA works in section 16.1 we're going to talk about the F distribution here and by the way there are five sections in chapter 16 we're only going to look at the first three sections sections four and five are optional and we're going to omit those two sections so in section 16.1 first let's talk about this F distribution I think this is a relatively easy section and we're going to rely on stat crunch by the way in fact uh, throughout the entire chapter 16 we're going to rely on stat crunch we're not going to do anything by hand so this f distribution the, the word f here stands for fisher and there it is right up here named named in honor of sir ronald fisher and the timeline or the distribution was actually this uh, continuous probability distribution was discovered was early 1900 okay so this will be the third of our uh, series of continuous probability distributions we already know about the normal distribution we know about the t distribution and now this is the third of our distribution namely the f distribution now an f distribution is a continuous distribution just like a normal or a t that means this curve is a continuous curve there are no uh, breaks holes jumps or gaps in the curve okay now it it does look skewed in fact here you're looking at two different f distributions um, that are both skewed to the right now an F distribution is actually uh, known by its degrees of freedom uh, just like the T distribution was remember the T distribution also had the degree of freedom but the F distribution actually has two separate degrees of freedom which commonly are called the numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom now the reason they're called numerator denominator in section 16.3 you will see the the logic or the reasoning for that so now some of the properties of this f distribution you can see these properties again because this is a probability distribution the area under the curve represents probabilities just like the t and the normal distribution did and the area uh, over the over the entire area under the curve is one meaning hundred percent and the distribution is asymptotic that means it just the right tail of it extends indefinitely forever now something that's markedly different than the t distribution if you note here the f distribution starts at zero so unlike the t and the z or the standard normal distribution or any normal distribution those two distributions were symmetric the f distribution is not symmetric so we cannot use symmetries that we did with t and f uh, i'm sorry with the t and the uh, normal distribution okay now let's see how we're gonna actually find area under this curve and all we are interested with the f distribution we want to find the area to the right 
That's all we want to do here. We're not going to do anything else with this probability distribution. So I just want to show you this example and then we go, uh, I'll show you the output from StatCrunch and then we actually go to StatCrunch and I'll show you click by click how to do this. So in this example, we want to find the F value right in here. So this is an F curve, an F distribution with degrees of freedom in the numerator of 4, denominator is 12. And we want to find the F so that the area to the right is 0.05. Okay. Now, there is a table in the back of the book, table 8. If you're interested, you can go and figure it out on your own. But again, I'm not interested in that table. It's not a complete table anyhow. So we're going to rely on StatCrunch. And so from the table, that's what the author did. They went to his table in the back of the book with these parameters, 4 and 12, and the right tail area, 05. And this is the value of F that he found. Okay, so remember now, that's what we want to do in our example. So this is an um, F with 4 and 12 degrees of freedom. Now, let me show you the output from StatCrunch. And there you go. You get exactly the same answer that the author has. Remember, he had 3.26, which is the rounded version of this one. So in StatCrunch, this is what the F curve looks like. The area to the right is 0 0.05 right in here. Notice the numerator degrees of freedom is 4, denominator is 12. And of course the F th value here is going to be 3.26 rounded. Okay, so how did I do this? Let's go to StatCrunch and I'll show you. So while you're in StatCrunch, we get, we're going to go to Stat, Calculators, and go over right there there's the F distribution so we just click on letter F and you will see this distribution now these are the default values for degrees of freedom numerator and denominator so we're going to change those we're going to put our own 4 and 12 in here and we want the area to the right so I'm going to go greater than or equal and of course the tail area was 0.05 Okay, and then hit compute. And there is the value 3.26 that was in the table in the back of the author's textbook. And that's how I got the output in my notebook. So let me go back to here. Now, let's take a look at an exercise here from this section. So in this section, we're going to do number 10. You can try the others if you like to. So in exercise number 10, it reads for an F curve with degrees of freedom 6, 10. That's 6 for numerator, 10 for denominator. So be careful. If you switch those when you put them into stat crunch, you're going to get a different answer and the wrong answer. So we're going to have to input them in that order in stat crunch with 6, 10. Okay. And we want the right tail area to be 5%. We want it to be 1% and 0.25%, right? 5, 0, 1, 0, 0, 5. So here are the numbers actually, just to show you. We'll run them, of course, here in a minute, and you will see how that's done, but just so you have the numbers here. So with 6 degrees of freedom for the numerator, 10 for denominator, right tail 05. And these are the numbers that came out of a stat crunch. So once I put in 05, that's what I got. Then I cleared and I put 025. This is what the stat crunch gave me. And finally, for 0.01, I typed in 0.01. And this is the answer to the exercise. So what do you see here? These are the answer to A. I believe this was B. That's the answer to part B, and this is the answer to part C. So I'm going to go back to StatCrunch, and in StatCrunch, remember the degrees of freedom is different now. It's 6, and denominator is 10. And then we want the area to the right to be 0 0.05. Boom, and there you go. That's the 3.217. And then you just change that one to whatever you want. 025, I believe that was another one. There's 025. And then 01 was this one. 
and there you have it so that's how I got those numbers okay and I believe that's all in this section yes so again it's pretty brief section this was just to show you what that F distribution looks like and the reason we needed to talk about the F distribution is because when we do analysis of variance in our ANOVA procedure um, part of that analysis involves the F distribution so it is for that reason but we are done with this section and we are done with this lecture as well